Hello everyone, um, this is another video, but this one's kind of a follow-up video to episode 64, which we, which I dealt with doing an impact animation on our shield effect that we were creating a long time ago. Um, at the time, I used additional spheres and instances um, to create the impact animation. Um, since then, I've kind of came up with a different, easier, better way, in all honesty, to go proud uh, to approach it without actually needing to um, have all this extra meshes you need to render and extra textures and you just actually really simplify the whole thing and you can actually do it all inside the shield um, shader. So the shield shader that actually creates the shield can actually do the impacts as well. So as here's an, an example. I already have two impacts and um, marked in spot in the spot. Now the the magic trick to it is a little bit of using the dot. Uh, product. Uh, if we use a dot product, uh, that's really the magic behind this approach. Is more mathematics and less brute force, like well, how I did it previously. So this is this is the smart way of doing it. The other way was the dumb way of doing it. But that was the only way I was able to do it at the time. Um, I'm getting each each video. I'm getting slowly better and better at math. So I'm improving and I'm be able to use math in uh, more creative ways. So um, the idea is that. You use the dot product and you use the an angle from the center to the point that you're drawing. So you got to remember every pixel you draw has 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 um, an actual point in space. Um, I'm using normals. I would originally I was using world space, but then I tried normals and um, um, doesn't, doesn't, it doesn't matter. You get the same result. You still have to normalize it. Um, the real, let me I guess explain to you. The real, the main gist of it. So the main gist of it is that you get the point of impact, right? So you always, you, you know what the point of impact is, right? You take that point of impact and you subtract it from the origin of the sphere. So this way you kind of create a, um, a direction vector, right? So you have a direction vector from the center to the impact point. And then the next thing you do is um, you normalize it. So this way it becomes a normalized value. Because if we use two normalized um, um, rays in uh, with a dot product, we get a value between negative 1 and 1. And that is like the magic that, to make this happen. So let me just reiterate. You get the impact point. You subtract the origin of the sphere to get the direction angle, a direction um, ray from the center to that impact point, the center of that circle. And you can kind of just pass that into your shader. So I'm not, I'm actually hard coding everything right now. So these are my impact points. I have hit one, hit two, and hit three. So hit one and hit two. Um, it's pretty simple. Um, this one hits on the left, uh, in the back side. The Z, yeah, it's probably this right here. It's actually hitting the front. So it's the front of the shield that's being impacted. So I normalize it. But it should, you should know we should, the impact point should be normalized before it comes into the shader because you don't want to do this for every single pixel. But since I'm prototyping it, I'm just doing everything in the shader because I want I want to make this kind of quick and dirty, um, just to really illustrate to you guys because I because I, I feel bad doing showing you the brute force way of doing it and I really want you guys to know the smart way of doing it um, since I figured it out. Um, so you t you take a normalization right of that point from the center of the sphere, then um, you take the normal position of the pixel you're currently drawing, um, and you can very you can do that in various different ways. Um, the idea is you have to keep everything in the local space. Um, so, like right here, uh, I, I you can you can pass in world space, I guess, but need to normalize it. Like you don't need you can't use world space because world space is away from origin. So. Um, so the idea is that you you can use the normal value, which works really well. Um, so that's why I decided to use the normal value, because this and you have to worry so much about trying to convert world space into local space. Since the sphere already has a normal value for every single um, point, basically, we can use um, the normal. And it, after we we like um, apply the rotation to it, so we, so we know the exact rotation of the sphere in relation to the exact point of impact. So. We pass it in as a varying, so we have a new varying, and the varying comes into the fragment shader. Now, even though it's still a normal value, uh, the transition between the vertex shader to the fragment shader does interpolation, so it, this value is no longer normalized. 
and that kind of sucks. Uh, there's a thing you can say flat, like I'm like I'm doing for time, but flat won't work because we need because we draw per triangle, and I need. I need the uh, the normalized space of the pixel of the triangle that we're currently rendering. So if I do a flat, then I think it's just the first point in the triangle uh, overrides the rest. And but we need the actual points in between the three points. <clears throat> so we're rendering three points, and we want to you know we're rendering the pixels. So I need the pixels the actual direction based on the center. Um, so. Like I said, uh, the simple solution really is just you bring it in, and then you normalize it. So you have to normalize it even though it's a normal, and then r have the hit point already normalized before it comes into the shader. So this way you kind of remove at least this one thing. And like I said, when you do a dot product of two normal directions, you can get you get an angle value between negative one and one. If the values are one, that means the two points are exactly equal. That means the hit impact point and the pixel I'm drawing is exactly the same one. Uh, if it's a negative, then it's on the opposite end. So the impact point is here, but I'm drawing the pixel over there on the exact opposite. That's what negative one means. So by using that angle value, we can just say, well, if that angle between the, the impact point and the pixel I'm drawing is let's say greater than 99.9 .9, draw me red and that's what's happening here. I'm using the angle as a way to um, draw it so you, you can uh, you can make the the dot smaller just by constantly adding more nines to it the closer you get to one the smaller the dot gets uh, what dot was that one anyway probably make too many nines refresh refresh there you go. I made the dot even smaller. It's hard to tell with the red. Um, so, so uh, which I like I said, I didn't do all the work here. You guys, I can you guys can do it for yourselves if you want. Like the idea is, you could probably create an array, and um, you just pass in all the hit points. So this way, you can kind of do uh, as many hit points as you want. You know, and you just have a for loop in here that kind of just goes through the, the array. Um, I think you might have to pass in a value. This is how many uh, hit point, how many hits you have, because because uh, when you have an array in a, in a shader, um, it's going to be filled in completely. So if you have like a hundred um, uh, uh, vec threes, they'll be filled in with something with either garbage data or like all zeros. So you, you like I said, you probably have to pass in your array of points and then a, a float value saying how many to do. So you go from zero to max hits, whatever you want to call the variable, and you just loop in and basically you do something like this, and you can draw your points. If you just want to do small impacts, uh, for fun, I decided to at least give you guys a little something. Um, I set up a bit of an animation. Um, let me view world wrap so so you kind of kind of see everything uh so yeah if it's it's like you um i'm grading i'm i'm gonna draw based on two different angles and i'm gonna have that angle moving um and like you know the angle start where do i want to start it and then kind of like the thickness of where i want it to end um so this way i can actually create a ring and there you go and it's the same animation that we had in um, the previous, uh, except now we're just animating it while we're drawing our shield as well. So there you go. So if you had a for loop, you can then have every single point that's in uh, in here kind of just animate just like that. Uh, very simple, very easy. Um, so yeah, just a quick follow-up. I just wanted guys to show you a better way to go about it. Um, so this way you can kind of do shields. Uh, if you're doing shields, uh, like I said, I'm down in the future. I might do shields, and I'm actually f fully implement this. But I did this because I thought it would be fun to do, and uh, just wanted you guys to have a better way. So uh, I guess I see you guys in the next video. Please like and subscribe. Um, that's it. Hopefully, this is a short one. <laughs>